Well, we know that actions which promote an informed discussion can be useful. And that is a discussion which is led by trained teachers who are using really good curriculum resources that we know are good resources and not something that someone's just pulled off the internet. Hopefully they think it's good, but they know it's good. And that the teachers can then have an informed discussion with the students so that when the students are learning about this, they're learning the correct information. When they're discussing it, they're coming at this from an area of I have good information, I have knowledge to inform how I'm talking about it. The opposite is not good. The opposite is having things brought into schools where people don't have any quality control, where we don't know what's being happening, where people have made good intentions, but the data that what they're actually doing is helpful to young people isn't there. That's not helpful to young people. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to enhance the capacity in the school system in a sustained way to bring really good mental health knowledge, decrease stigma, and help young people understand these very complicated uh, components related to mental health. Well, some of the things that we know don't help are big school assemblies about certain topics. They don't make a big difference in much. The other thing is that we know that some topics can, for vulnerable people, create problems. So there are three topics that we advise that we take about very, very carefully before we consider bringing them into a school setting. One is to talk about eating disorders because we know that often information about eating disorders can trigger activities around difficulties in eating in some vulnerable young people. Secondly, we know that self-harm, often if it's presented in a way which is not integrated into a classroom curriculum, can actually trigger self-harm behaviors. And people do this with the best of intentions, but it can actually trigger self-harm. And the other is suicide. We know that one-off auditorium gatherings, discussions in the, in, in the classroom about suicide don't work. And in fact, there's actually some data that shows that interventions which are put into classrooms for people from outside the classrooms discussing suicide actually can make things worse. So we avoid those as well. Well, what we have learned from many years of trying to understand how best for a community to respond to suicide is that we encourage the community to get back to its usual activities as soon as possible. That they treat the suicide of a young person as they would treat any tragic event. An accident, a young death, it's a tragic, it's a tragic issue. What we want to do and what we want to avoid doing are different things. We want to avoid glorification of the event. We want to avoid glorification of the person that has died. We want to avoid encouraging other people to think that this might be a way out of a problem. So we have to be very careful about these issues.